hoarseness which includes all disorders of voice it constitute around 25 to 30 percentage of all cases coming to an ENT surgeon. So the anatomy of larynx especially the anatomy of vocal fold is very important for proper in, uh, diagnosis and management of vocal cord lesions. So anatomy of larynx was al already uh, explained in previous classes. So this class is for anatomy of vocal folds. Okay, and uh, knowledge of this is very much needed for doing microlaryngeal surgeries and uh, to know the pathophysiology of uh, Rengis edema and um, also the voice disorders because this is the basis of Hirano's the cover body uh, model of voice production. Okay, so anatomy of vocal foods. Uh, if I draw a cross-section of the larynx, it will be like this. Uh, and also this thyroarytenoid muscle. Here. So if you got any doubt in uh, anatomy of larynx, just revise the previous class on anatomy of larynx which was given in uh, two parts I remember. Uh, and here comes the membranous portion of the vocal cord. So I zoom the membranous portion of the vocal cord and uh, uh, draw, I will draw the anatomy of membranous portion of vocal cord. The epithelium covering the uh, vocal cord folds or the true vocal cord is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and going towards the supraglottis it becomes uh, ciliated columnar epithelium and towards the subglottis it becomes pseudo stratified ciliated columnar that is the respiratory epithelium it is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium the first layer um, first layer is okay and uh, below this mucosa is attached to a basinal membrane and it is spreading over the vocal ligament. What is vocal ligament? I will explain now. So this mucosa is stretched over the uh, vocal ligament and that is why the true vocal cord looks like a um, whitish in color. Okay. So first layer is a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And next is lamina propria. Okay. Lamina propria, which is again divided into three layers, which is a superficial layer, then a deep, uh, intermediate, and it has got a deep layer also. Okay. So, the superficial layer of lamina propria is loosely arranged and it contains both elastic and collagen fibers. Okay, so superficial layer has got elastic and collagen fiber and it is loosely arranged. So, when I draw in this, just below the uh, epithelium, that is superficial layer of Lamina propria and where the fibers are loosely arranged and it has got both elastic and collagen fibers. Okay, and the, in the intermediate layer it is the elastic fibers are seen more, uh, more in number and it has got a definite pattern of arrangement. And coming to this area, it has got a definite pattern.
and in the deep layer it is the collagen fibers which is more commonly seen collagen fibers and it has also got a definite pattern of arrangement okay so only in this superficial layer it is loosely arranged right so this intermediate and deep layers of this uh, lamina propria together we call it as a vocal ligament okay this intermediate and deep layers of lamina propria we call it as a vocal ligament and the superficial layer usually it, uh, it forms the ringy space Okay, ringy space. So in the uh, this ringy space extends uh, throughout the free border of the membranous vocal cord, and towards the anterior part it goes from the free border towards the upper surface of the membranous vocal cord. Okay, so ringy space is there throughout the length of the free border of the vocal cord, and towards the anterior part it goes um, towards the upper border of the membranous vocal cord. And the collection of uh, edema fluid in this space, we call it as ringis edema. And this ringis space is one of the spaces of larynx. The others being preepiglottic space and paraglottic space. Okay. And this uh, uh, so non-creatinized atrophic squamous epithelium, along with this superficial layer of this uh, lamina propria. It acts as a single unit and that is called the cover. Okay, cover of vocal cord. So, what is the body? Body is formed by the uh, vocalis muscle. So, deep to this lamina propria. The third structure is the muscle. Muscle layer which forms the body and this muscle is a vocalis muscle. Okay. So, here comes the vocalis muscle. Here you can see the muscle fibers. What is this vocalis muscle? Vocalis muscle is actually the medial part of the thyroarytenoid muscle. There, are, there is also lateral fibers of uh, thyroarytenoid muscle. So the medial fibers of thyroarytenoid muscle is otherwise called the vocalis muscle. And that forms the body of vocal cord. And this uh, vocal ligament we call it as a transition. Okay, so this is the basis of Hirano's uh, body cover module. Okay, body model of voice production. This comes in the uh, physiology of voice production. Okay, so this cover that is uh, squamous epithelium along with the superficial layer of lamina propria. And the body is formed by the thyroarytenoid muscle uh, or the medial part of thyroarytenoid muscle otherwise called the vocalis muscle. So uh, what is the physiology I will just uh, describe in one word that is this, uh, uh, this cover and the uh, body has got different muscle mass and different in composition. So when this uh, uh, there is a pressure difference between these two fibers, two masses, cover and body, the mode of uh, vibration of this both part, that's cover and the body will, dif will be different because of the difference in mass and also in composition. So the vibration of these two areas will be different. So this different uh, or the difference in vibration will cause a, produce a buzzing sound and this uh, supraglottic tract, this area, will produce modulation to this buzzing sound and it will produce voice. Okay, so that is Hirano's cover body model of voice production theory or cover body theory of voice production. Okay, and this vocal folds from the two sides will meet in the midline. These two vocal folds will meet in the midline anteriorly and at that point this vocal ligament of the two sides 
will come and attach with the um, thyroid cartilage, perichondrium of the thyroid cartilage. So at the anterior point, these two uh, right and left uh, vocal folds will come and meet and the vocal ligament of, of this vocal folds will join with the perichondrium of the thyroid cartilage and that forms the Bruins ligament. Bruins ligament. So, in a sense, this Bruins ligament is, will act as a barrier to the spread of malignancy. So, once this Bruins ligament is involved, this Bruins ligament contains blood vessels and lymphatics. So, once it is breached, it will act as a root for spread of malignancy into the uh, extra laryngeal uh, area or it will be a root to extra laryngeal spread. Okay, you got it? The two vocal cords will come and meet anteriorly and at that point the vocal ligament of the two sides will join with the or uh, combine with the perichondrium of the thyroid cartilage anteriorly and that is called the Broyles ligament and this Broyles ligament itself acts as a barrier to the spread of malignancy. But when, when uh, once it is breached by uh, the tumour, because this Broyles ligament contains plenty of blood vessels and lymphatics, it will act as root for the spread of malignancy to the extra laryngeal area. Okay. This vocalis muscle uh, originate from, here comes the vocal process of arytenoid. So vocalis muscle originate from the lateral surface of the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage and it attaches to the anterior to the ipsilateral vocal ligament. So this vocalis muscle arises from the vocal process of retinoid cartilage and it attaches to the anterior part of vocal ligament. So what is the action of this one? Uh, the vocalis muscle when the vocal cords lengthen it thins similar to a rubber band. You remember a rubber band when you lengthen it the rubber band will thin. And when you shorten it, what will happen? There will be the thickness of the rubber band will increase. Similar to that, this vocal cords also, when it is lengthened, it becomes thin. And when it is tensed or shortened, it becomes thin, thick. Okay. So the vocalis muscle, in a sense, generally, it will make the uh, vocal cord short and thick. So it will change the tonal quality of voice. When you take a high pitch voice, this uh, vocal ligament, this vocal ligament will uh, become lengthened and thinner and in low pitch voice it become thick and short. Okay, so that is the action of vocalis muscle. Because this vocalis muscle is attached to, inserted into the anterior part of the vocal ligament, it makes a change in the tonal quality of voice. Two lines, one is a superior arcuate line and an inferior arcuate line. I, I have already told you that the vocal uh, folds are lined by stratified squamous epithelium and when it goes to the supraglottis, it becomes a ciliated columnar epithelium and when it goes to the subglottis, it becomes a pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium that is the respiratory epithelium. So in the transition phase, superiorly that is superior arcuate line Inferiorly, there is um, inferior arcuate line. Okay, so the clinical importance is mainly in the uh, microlaryngeal surgery. And in the microlaryngeal surgery, we have to work in this space. We should never injure the vocal ligament because vocal ligament, once injured, it will cause a permanent scarring which will alter the quality of voice. So after making an uh, incision over the uh, epithelium, you have to elevate a flap and remove the uh, lesion without causing any damage to the vocal ligament. That is very important and it has to be taken utmost care in doing a microlaryngeal surgery. And the Ringis edema is seen in space of Ringis space because it is loosely arranged uh, fibers of collagen and elastin. So, Ringis edema will cause a baggy swelling seen, usually seen bilaterally and it is one of the reason for hoarseness in uh, patients who are chronic smokers or uh, 
uh, exposed to allergic gases. So as I already told, the importance of bronze ligament in spread of malignancy.